Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series, episode 85. And we were, uh, in the last episode, we just saw a Secubot in this room. I think I'm going to go in there and show you why they're dangerous. Uh, assuming he still has ammunition, he's going to kill us very quickly. So let's just walk in here, see what he does. Hello, I'm going to shoot you, and presumably he'll shoot us before we shoot him. Okay, I mean, we have a good shot at a critical, I want you to kill me oh and there's a turret down here no it said hostile detected uh are you gonna shoot me or what there we go we got one to shoot why uh why didn't you i thought they burst fire when they're close to us interesting uh it's weird that they're not murdering us okay i mean we'll just shoot them you were attacked ignore um, presumably they'll kill us. Something hurts. Ignore. Ignore. Uh, let's fall back. Let's, I mean, I was just going to let them kill us, but let's just treat this as though we were going to engage them. Uh, we would obviously back up and not let three of them shoot us at once. So we would try to get off some quick shots to put them down before they're able to really shoot us. Uh, go ahead and interesting uh, because we're not getting criticals we're not dealing very much damage to them but you'll see they can't take very many shots they do i probably should have mentioned that they do spawn in groups of three or four most of the time um, especially if you go into a finale we still have not seen the laboratory finale um, at the bottom of the science lab there's basically a special room that will have lots of goodies in it so here we were actually able to kill the riot bots i am still going to reload my save because i basically let them shoot us quite a bit um, you'll see they did have ammunition on them, including Stanag mags, which they dropped. Again, you can dissect them, or uh, butcher them rather. It will give you lots of stuff. It should say somewhere in here that we'll get an M16. That's the main thing I would be focused on. Most of the other stuff, not super interesting to me. They are pretty free for solder as well. If you take apart all this stuff, you'll get a decent amount of solder, but I would not recommend doing that. Let's look around this room a little bit, see what's all in here. Oh, this is the finale. Oh, well then we definitely did want to come in here. So this is the bottom floor of the lab. Okay, ignore that. Southeast and above you hear hostile detected. Mm-hmm. Let's peek up. We can't peek up. I'm wondering, can a turret see us from upstairs? No, it's shooting something else. Okay, um, so this is the finale. Uh, we should talk about it. Looks like they destroyed some mutagen here. That's unfortunate. Look around a little bit. So this one has some storage shelves. They won't always have storage shelves. shelves. Sometimes they will just be giant empty rooms. Um, and there's mainly two reasons that you would come into the finale. Number one is that a lot of them have science ID cards. Like we discussed, the science ID card can be used to crack open. Maybe we'll just roll with this save since we're already here. We can recover our torso. Nothing else interesting has happened to us. So it's like, might as well. Unless it ripped up our clothes real bad. Just the duffel bag, huh? Okay, well, we'll just roll with the save. Again, I was going to let them kill us, but then I thought, let's just do it as though we were actually trying to go into the room. Um, a lot of these would just be big empty rooms. Science ID cards, like we said, can be used to crack open labs rather than digging through the walls. This also has the added benefit of disabling the hallway turret when you first enter a lab. So always, always want to pick up science ID cards. They can also be used for mechs. You'll see this little corner here. This is where, if there is a mech in the finale, it will spawn in this glass case room. Um, I'm not sure what you would really need to get in here. Um, I would not recommend fooling with consoles as I, I have already discussed. Don't play with them unless you have a very good computer skill. And it's my opinion that even at very high computer skill, it's still never worth it to open this because if we fail, it could spawn one of those robots right next to us, which um, some of them are pretty lethal. The ones we saw, for some reason, were not burst firing, um, and they were not taking shots very often. So I'm not really sure why they were so weak and pathetic. Um, so the mech is definitely something that some people are interested in. There are three mechs in the game. I'm not very interested in any of them. They don't really appeal to me personally, um, but they're cool. If you haven't played with them, you might as well play with one. Um, and some people really like them. So that's what this glass container room is for. Unfortunately, we just did not get one to spawn. Sometimes, if there's a mech in here, these these robots will, instead of attacking you, they will come over here and shoot the mechs, I believe. Because currently, mechs are handled as if they are creatures. Um, so the 
the robots regard them as an enemy and will shoot them unless that has changed what should happen is that they make the robots allied to the mechs so that they will not attack each other um, i'm not sure if that's po it's, if that's how it's set up now um, but that's how it should be set up so that that is prevented but if you see that happening it usually means you can get some free shots on the robots because they're distracted by the mech we did that in a recent playthrough i don't remember which one um, so we'll grab the mutagen and stuff so those are two of the appeals of the finale is the possibility for getting a mech and the possibility of getting that science id card the id card is a crapshoot it's not in every layout of the finale um, but it's in enough that it's a pretty common thing to find looks like they killed a kevlar zombie as well those are pretty dangerous so it's nice that we didn't have to deal with him kevlar zombies just have a lot of armor and uh, you can shoot them it just takes mm, a lot kevlar zombies are pretty weak once you get to the higher tier kevlar enemies they're quite dangerous um, because they can take full clips without dying. Looks like we have a lit up... No, it's a light underneath the object. Um, so just more loot here. Obviously, we could loot all these things um, for, for stuff, uh, although many of them seem to have reanimated, so their stuff isn't on them. It's littered around the room in piles. Looks like... Um, oh, the Kevlar zombie died here. You can tell because it was a soldier, um, so it has all this soldier loot on it. So we'll take some of that stuff. Um, any other loot laying around? Looks like this guy had his loot on him still. Uh, are we sprinting? Why are we losing stamina? Because we're just like super injured probably. Go ahead and eat just a crap ton of aspirin. And that should help a little bit over time here. Anyway, there were a couple consoles in this room. That is what we're seeing all smashed up here. And then the main thing, this appears in basically every finale. There will be something of interest in this room in this particular room we have a giant vat we need to be able to see it here a giant vat it is a standing tank and it is most likely filled with mutagen this is very good if you really really want to mutate your character uh did we take robust genetics we did not so i'm not super interested do we still have the pickaxe we do but it's empty because of that accidental charge um I don't really want the mutagen, but we should take it with us. And uh, we'll go upstairs, we'll grab, we'll recharge the jackhammer, we'll take some serious pain medication instead of this garbage that we did take. Uh, this is not the stairs we took previously. That's very dangerous. We could have popped up into a turret there. So always try to go back up the stairs you came down. I think we were over here. Stamina is still dropping. I'm assuming that's a product of our pain and whatnot. I'm not sure why that... Oh, we're overburdened. I see. Yes, that's probably why it's not recovering. So we'll go ahead and wait. It's depleting at such a small rate that it's not a very big deal. Um, the poison reduced our strength further, so it's going to be in a bigger deal now. But um, it's reducing our stamina at such a low rate that it's just that it's not recovering. That's why we're dealing with the constant heartbeats. It's not that we're in any danger of, like, giving out our breath or anything. So, we'll head upstairs. Glad we found the finale. That's something we were going to, um, basically, the only reason I was still exploring the lab was to get to the finale so we could discuss it. Let me shut that off while we're up here. Okay, so we're quite injured, so we're going to go ahead and grab some... Oh, I don't know, something powerful. Uh, what's our current painkiller? We were discussing in Discord recently that you can't OD on aspirin uh, because the amount that you would need to consume would be a ridiculous portion of your body weight. So we can eat as many aspirin as we want. My concern is that if we take something, I think we have morphine. We, we didn't bring it with us? Okay, well, that's fine. Um, or maybe we don't have the syringe on us, and that's why. Um, if we take stronger painkillers, I am concerned we could OD and have some problems, but I think we could easily take, is Oxy, is, yeah, is for painkilling. Do we have any better painkillers? I could swear we had some morphine here. Um, don't drink ether, would recommend against. Um, looks like all we really have is the Oxy. I really thought we had more stuff. I mean, we have Xanax and stuff. Give me, give me the Oxy. Let's verify that that's painkiller. I'm pretty sure Oxycontin is... Well, there's Oxycodone and Oxycontin. They're two different things, if I remember right. Um, one is a codeine, or one is an opiate, one is not. Semi-synthetic narcotic used in treatment of intense pain. Yes, so Oxy we will take. 
Um, or maybe I'm misremembering. Someone told me they were different. I just believe people when they tell me things. So we are on painkillers. We're down to moderate pain. I'm hesitant to take two, so we'll just take some aspirin as well. Because I really don't think we'll OD or anything. Okay, ignore that message, please. Um, so that's unfortunate. Go ahead and dump the jackhammer. And we'll start charging that. How are our batteries? 100%. Excellent. Go ahead and turn on the recharger. We are... Oh, we had the aisle lights on the whole time. We're going to turn on the engine because this time we're actually charging multiple batteries at once. And we don't want to accidentally deplete our engine. Even though with the solar panel, we would just have to wait a little while and then we would be able to start the car. I still don't like the idea of depleting our batteries. Um, just for, I guess, role play reasons. I don't really like the idea. Um, we don't want this book. Go ahead and drop the book. Give me... Oh, and we don't need the mutagen. Or really any of this stuff. Uh, drop all of this. Hang on to the MRE. We do probably need something to eat. Drop the battery. <sighs> what else do we want to do? We took a lot of torso damage. I really should have just reverted and, and fought them normally. Um instead of trying to let them kill us. I wanted to show you their offensive capability. Hopefully, uh, I don't think I illustrated it well, because I'll be honest, they can burst fire. So I'm really unsure why they were doing single fire. Maybe it has to be within one tile, because I've had them spawn right next to me, and I've hit them with a melee weapon, and then they burst fired me to death instantly. So like, I don't know if we just weren't close enough, or maybe they changed, or maybe it was a different robot that I'm thinking of, I, I really, I don't know. Um, what am I doing? Completely brain farted. We want the book, and I wouldn't mind treating our wounds now uh, a little bit. We can just wait till we go to sleep. Give me, give me the book. We're gonna continue raising computer science uh, because we would like to be able to install CBMs. So we'll just read this for a little while. Should probably put in our earbuds. It's just super annoying to have to do this stuff every single time we wanna wanna read something. Give me the MP3. Give me, uh, can we drink anything for a good mood? I don't think we really have other perishable beverages. I think we had some, I guess we drank it. We'll drink some lemonade. And we'll pop this uh, MRE, which we should have done immediately so we'll go ahead and butcher butcher we eat this stuff because i don't know that we've eaten a lot of calories since we had all that meat yesterday maybe that was today i don't remember i had to take a break in between episodes because of landscaping um let's should be in a good mood now activate the mp3 read the book this way we're not just wasting time waiting for that to charge. We're at least uh, gaining some progress towards our next level. Due to our injuries and whatnot, we're gonna struggle a little bit with focus. Actually, we're not in pain anymore thanks to that Oxy. Still though, we're not gonna get much past like 15% probably before we stop. And then we'll go down and crack that open, see what kind of mutagen is in that tank or if it's even mutagen. I guess there's a possibility it could be something else, but I'm pretty sure they always have mutagen in them. So drop this, activate this, and this is what I mean. We just spent that time picking that up, eating and all that to get a little bit of mood boost for what was essentially a very brief period of reading. So not always worth it, but we'll head down, we'll crack that open. Uh, we're gonna want empty containers. Do we have any empty jugs? We can find them in the lab, but I'd rather just grab them here. Gallon, we have a gallon jug. I'd like to hang on to these because uh, I should be collecting chemicals and haven't been. Uh, so there's that. There may be some in here. Pretty sure there's no turrets or anything, but we'll take a peek. No jugs either. It's okay. We'll head down. There were at least some in the room where the mutagen was, where the tank was. So we should be able to just uh, do that pretty easily. Just going to peek as we go around, hoping maybe we'll find a jug somewhere. Okay, let's go down and see what we got in this finale. Finales don't interest me a whole lot. I know some people really, really like the finales because it's a great place to get a lot of mutagen. Like I said before, I'm not a big fan of mutagen in this game. You have any jugs in here? Man, we're just not seeing a lot of jugs, huh? Nothing? Okay, I mean, this is fine. 
it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, and need to wait for the gas. Since I don't like Mutagen, they're not super appealing to me. There are other finales. The Mutagen is probably the one I see the most. Um, you can find other things. There is a special machine that makes um, cutting weapons better uh, and has some interesting recipe stuff going on. There is uh, there's one that has just a crap ton of mini nukes. We've talked about uh, mini nukes previously. Again, a hackable computer, we're obviously not going to do that. It has the same storage listing, uh, PE followed by a number, um, which is what we saw in the mutagen closet. So that hints at what is inside. We'll go through the glass here. Tata 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 tat. Where am I? Why does it hurt rebooting in 59 seconds? We can ignore that. It's a cyborg somewhere. Probably another. Um, they can just spawn in rooms, but it's probably another auto dock layout. So we'll hop in here, uh, examine. And you'll see it has 59 mutagen inside of it. That is about four gallons. Um, four gallons would be 60. So it's four gallons of mutagen or 59 charges. That means we could mutate 59 times by consuming this mutagen. I would not recommend you do that. Um, mutating, every time you mutate, you actually take damage. Um, or maybe it's not guaranteed. Maybe it's just a chance of damage. Um, but it's pretty common that you will take damage. Give me this syringe. Um, so you don't want to just chug a bunch of mutagen because it could kill you. Um, and number two, like I said, we don't have robust genetics. So there's a very good chance that what we would get is not good for us. I guess we'll drink some. Let's just uh, dispense in the container. And we're going to fill these gallon jugs. Unload ammonia onto the ground, unload, nope, unload ammonia onto the ground, nope, onto, nope, onto the ground. Uh, wasn't there one more? Did we only pick up two other gallon jugs? Okay. Uh, so dispense, pour in a container, jug, dispense, pour in a container, jug. The only thing I will say is that um, sometimes it will be flavored mutagen. Uh, to my understanding. So sometimes this will not be a tank of mutagen. It will be a tank of like ursine mutagen. And it will be that specific category of mutagen. Um, the other thing I will say is that mutagen... I haven't crafted mutagen in like a year of real life time or longer. So it's not something I do on a regular basis. But back when I used to do it, crafting mutagen types, like say I wanted to craft bird mutagen it would start with us making regular mutagen. So finding gallons and gallons of regular mutagen is good, not only because you can just eat it and mutate, but it's good because you can turn that mutation, that mutagen into a more specific mutation, mutagen by crafting. So we could take these three gallons of mutagen and convert them to three gallons of bird mutagen or some comparable, you know, I don't know if it's, it would be a one-to-one -one ratio but it would be a certain amount of regular mut of bird mutagen. I mean, I can't talk today. So let's look at it now. Yeah, it has about a gallon left in it. Um, if you were playing this and you were into mutating, you would probably take every drop. I'm not super interested. Um, why don't we save and we'll just try some mutagen. <sighs> God, I hate mutating. Okay, um, and we're also quite injured, so I wouldn't really recommend you do this. Mutating can cause damage. Mutating will increase your hunger and thirst, uh, things like that. So if you're struggling in that regard, I would not recommend taking it. But uh, let's just take one. Uh, you'll see we got our night vision mutation turns into high night vision. What that means is that we had the night vision perk from starting the game. We, we set up um, a, a, high vi a, a regular night vision trait. And what this has done is mutated that trait into a higher tier version of itself. That is something that happens. So if we walk into this dark room and we flip off our flashlight, you'll see our night vision is bigger than it used to be. If we look here, um, okay, yep, that seems to be the range. So one, two, three, four, five, six tiles, as opposed to the four that we had, oh, hiccup, the four that we had previously. What is the mutation menu key? Nope, that's sidebar. Nope, that's history. How do I... Is it capital P? 
No. What is um? What's the mutation menu? Isn't there a menu for this? Uh, keybinds. Mu. Mu. Nope. Mutation. View. Okay. So left square bracket. Okay. This shows our mutations. This will also um, exclamation to examine a mutation. You see incredibly well. Yeah, we already have that. Uh, and then if we toggle back, it will be activating the mutation. So if we toggle it, you'll see it reverts our night vision to the default, which is only two tiles. Um, we no longer have access to what our previous vision was, but if we remember it was four tiles. Um, and we can, of course, can turn that back on. Um, and now we can see much farther. So that's a very good mutation. Very happy that we got that mutation. If we go and back and look, you'll see we also got a mutation called Nomad. So we didn't just get one benefit, we actually also got a negative mutation. So if we look in our menu and we go, you can tell they're color coded, so you can tell which are good and which are bad. We look at Nomad. You're too adventurous for your own good. The more time you spend somewhere, the unhappier it makes you to be there. This is one that is pretty innocuous. I believe it gives a negative morale the longer you spend in a single location. Um, but since you go out traveling a lot in general and you go exploring, it's not a super big deal. If you're gonna spend like a week reading a book in your house, it can be pretty negative morale if I recall correctly. I've only had this once before, so it's not something I can say with certainty. Uh, oh, what was, oh, it was lightning from the generator you'll see we're still overweight because of the jackhammer and we're carrying multiple gallons of mutagen um so we got a negative mutation now the one of the reasons i don't like mutations uh is that if we drink more mut mutagen right now we have a chance of this going away so that good benefit that we just got there's a chance it just disappears right and it could even revert to the point where it's worse, I believe, than what we started with. Actually, no. I don't think you can remove traits that you begin the game with. Is that still true? Actually, I don't know. I don't want to say that that's true. But the point is, we could lose this positive perk. Um, we could also lose Nomad, and it would be good for us if we lost Nomad. Um, if that mutated into something different. Generally, what happens is they mutate more severely. So like this nomad might become something like, um, like uh, what's the opposite of an agoraphobe? Like where you can't be inside, like cabin fever or whatever. You can't be inside even for an hour. Um, it could progress to that point. I don't know that that exists. That's just an example. But this night vision, if it were to progress, it would most likely go to full night vision, which would mean we could see perfectly in the dark. Then if you have mutations that you don't want, generally what you will take is serum. I don't believe we've found serum, or I'm sorry, purifier. We've not found purifier in this lab. Generally, it's the thing I find the most um, for mutations, so I'm surprised we haven't found any. Um, but purifier will remove multiple by, um, mutations. They can be good or bad. It's a complete crapshoot on which ones get removed. Um, there is, I believe, an item in the game that lets you target a specific mutation to remove. Um, but it's incredibly rare. Uh, so it's not something that you can rely on. This is, again, the randomness of mutation is why I don't use it. I do not like that we can just get random stuff. And when we're drinking mutagen, plain old unflavored mutagen, which is just listed as mutagen, it can pull a mutation from basically any skill tree, right? Any particular archetype of mutation. So like I said, there are categories, ursine, rat, bird, uh, I think um, uh, slime is one, there's alpha, there's all kinds of different mutation categories. Mutagen can pull really from just about any category. So it's a complete crapshoot on what you get. If you take a targeted mutation, mutagen, like we had found some ursine, it will give us ursine specific mutations. So once you learn what trees you wanna be in, you can target which muta mutations you're most likely to get. But there's good and bad in every category. So it's like, it's just a crapshoot. I don't know what more to say about it. I don't like mutation. I don't uh, enjoy the system. It's too random. Uh, randomness is not something that I like uh, in, in a game like this. I like to have a lot of control over my character. So um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't often do it. I just took one there for example's sake. It's something I 
In my casual playthrough, I often feel guilty for not mutating, so I usually try to take some just for entertainment purposes uh, for the people who like it. It's interesting that I peeked and you got a free attack when I was peeking because I thought peeking meant they could not attack you. But that apparently is not the case, but we'll murder this guy because screw him. Uh, and we'll check around here, see if there's anything of interest. Um, but at this, at this point, we've already found the finale, which is like the main thing. Let's unload this bleach. We'll take the remaining four on the ground. Um, you'll see between us sprinting and being overburdened, we lost all of our stamina. So we'll wait until we catch. Oh, there's another robot. Where, where are you? From the east. Okay, so we'll kill that one as well because we're going to butcher them in hopes of maybe getting some CBMs. Hello, madam. I will put you out of your misery. I'm sorry you're suffering in a robot, like a robot hellscape. So we'll go ahead and haul her over here. And we will butcher these two for potentially getting some CBMs. So we'll do that quickly. Go ahead and dissect. Hopefully our flashlight holds out. I don't know how much battery charge we have left. Two faulty bionics, that's unfortunate. Go ahead and dissect and see what we get. Again, they mostly have not great CBMs anyway. Uh, so four faulty bionics, not good. Um, and since we got this other gallon jug, I guess we will take, um, oh, did it drop my jug? No, it's still there. We will fill the remainder with, uh, with this mutagen. And we'll take this all upstairs since we're so overburdened, we should head upstairs. And at this point, that's, I'm done. Like, I'm not super interested in exploring the rest of the lab. Obviously, if you were doing this casually and you wanted the maximum benefit, you would explore every inch of this lab um, for hopefully finding more armories. Um, the main things I'm looking for, as we've discussed, are CBMs. So basically, we would want to go around, clear every auto dock room because they can spawn CBMs, clear every um, scientist zombie that we see so that we can dissect them for potentially CBMs. Um, in the barracks, there's a chance that they will spawn the military zombies, which can have military CBMs. Um, and there's just a lot of places to find mutagen and CBMs in the lab. I don't know how interested I am in doing that. Obviously, I would like more bionics than what we've got. Um, we might spend maybe one more episode, like maybe we'll go down and clear that bottom floor and just peek around and see if there's any um, anything good to be found. But for the most part, I'm over clearing the lab and we should turn our attention to other things. So I don't know if we'll do a proper episode on mutagen ever, or if that's going to have to suffice as our example of mutagen um, and how, how that works. I don't like mutagen uh, in case that wasn't clear by the 30 times I said it. So I'm not an expert and I don't really feel equipped to, to make a proper episode about it. Hopefully you understand the basics. Um, if you're a new player and you want to try mutagen, I would encourage you to do it. There's some really cool mutation stuff in the game. If you're someone who really likes role-playing, I would encourage you to use mutation because you can turn yourself into a squid person or you can get hooves uh, or whatever, and it really adds a lot to the flavor of the character. I'm just not really into it. I prefer bionics. I prefer the control you have. I would like to see more bionics that um, emulate mutations. Um, but that's not really what Cataclysm does. So, like, for me, um, I've recently been reading The Rifts. Um, it's a tabletop RPG from the early 90s. And a lot of their bionics in that game, uh, it's like a sci-fi, you know, future thing. A lot of the bionics in that game are cosmetic, are just about altering your appearance. Kind of like some of the mutations in Cataclysm. So you might get a horn, or you might get hooves, or a leg replacement. That kind of stuff is really interesting to me, and I wish Cataclysm did more of that. But within the lore of the game, bionics are not really civilian available. At least that's the current lore as far, far as I understand it. So you will only find CBMs really on scientists and, and military people, stuff like that. I'm hoping as the game progresses, we get into more civilian available cybernetics, which can lead to things like bionic limbs, uh, prosthetic limbs, um, cosmetic changes like horns and eye color and just silly little things that have absolutely no point in the game. I mean, maybe we can make headbutt attacks, but like mostly are just for flavor and building your character story because currently a lot of mutation is that. It just gives you some stuff. Most of it doesn't have a huge benefit, but it lets you role play that particular character. 
that's where I would like to see CBMs progress to as well. Currently, there's actually not that many CBMs. There are certainly more mutations, I, I believe, than there are CBMs. Um, and I just, um, yeah, I don't know. I would like to see see more. And uh, mutations just don't interest me very much. So that's about all I have to say about that. So we may spend one or more, you know, a couple more days exploring this lab. I think when we're done, we're going to head back to base for a while, do a little bit more vehicle work and, and take care of the autoclave and stuff. And then I would like to check out this other lab because this is different from the lab we just explored. This has a completely different layout. Um, I mean, the loot is going to be very similar uh, in a lot of ways, uh, chemicals and, and stuff. But um, it's, it's a new-ish location, so I would like to show that off as well. Other than that, it's probably just going to be a little bit of wandering around the world. We're going to see more monster evolutions, which we'll talk about. I don't know. Maybe we'll go in the prison. There's no reason for us to go in here, but maybe we'll go in just to look around or something. But anyway, that's going to do it for now. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Liking a video really helps me out. It puts my content out there for more people to see, which is obviously very important to me. Um, and then secondarily, if you're still watching this at 31 minutes or so, um, you're the best. Thank you for watching. Uh, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back with more in the near future.